Was Alexis drinking brown liquor tonight? Hi friends, I'm Aura. If this is your first time seeing my face, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and also like the video. I'm trying to get on as many home pages as possible. We're on the road to 1,000 subscribers and with all y'all's help, I can definitely get there. Today we are talking the Ready to Love Season 9 reunion. We're finally here y'all. Finally. So it starts off with the recap of the entire season. We see all the clips. Da 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 da. I don't need to go through that. Y'all saw it. Y'all watched the season. That's why we're here today. So then we go straight into Alonzo and Patrice. So after Alonzo and Patrice chose each other, apparently he gave her a key to his apartment. Why? Why? Anywho, three days later, from him giving her the key, she decides to pull up on him. It was like 10 o'clock at night and there was a lady at his place. What did I say about Alonzo, the first Ready to Love review I posted on my channel? What did I say? He's a sneaky link. Here's your proof, right here. So Alonzo tries to explain the whole situation. He says that his Jeep was like messed up at the time and she came over to help him or whatever. He had to get groceries or whatever, but he didn't really explain. I was kind of like confused about this whole thing. Did she come over to take you to the grocery store? Did she come over? Did you, did she let you use her car to go to the grocery store? Why couldn't she? No, no, no. Why couldn't you, Alonzo, call an Uber? to go to the grocery store, call an Uber to go back home? Or why couldn't she come, take you to the grocery store, drop you back off to drop off your um, groceries and then go home? And then it was 10 o'clock at night. You were at the grocery store at 10 o'clock? Really? No one on stage is believing this. Everyone up there is feeling like me, like, doesn't make sense. Patrice said that what Alonzo doesn't know is that she actually met up with that girl and she told her that, you know, they had been involved. They actually slept together in May, which was during the process. And to me, they're more than friends. I don't do that with my friends. I don't, no. I don't gamble in the dark arts with my friends. Don't do that. And then, I guess from that conversation with her, she found out that there were three more women that he was involved with. He was getting testing done. And he just, because they were supposed to be exclusive. I forgot to mention that. She said that the two of them decided that they were going to be exclusive with each other. Um, but he wasn't doing that. This guy, he ain't ready to love definitely not ready to love he's ready to get exposure and get more dms and add more people to his roster which it looks like he did so after that we get confessionals from patrice and lorenzo and i'm like why are there confessionals on the reunion i don't understand that because the reunion is a time where we talk about everything that happens on the show and in the confessionals so why are there confessionals on the reunion that didn't make sense to me. I feel like they're trying to make it a drama-filled reality show because they think that that's what people like. But not everybody loves loving hip-hop and stuff like that. Like, not everybody's on that. You know what I mean? Like, we want to see something real. Reality TV. Like, we want to see the real thing. So then we move into Will's segment or Mr. Hemothy himself. And we see, you know, his flashbacks or his time on the show 
And when we get back to them on the stage, we clarify the definition of what a staged home is. A staged home is a home that has furniture in it that people come to to see what their potential home could look like fully furnished. So he wasn't sleeping on the floor, Patrice. Then he starts getting into it with Mika and I was kind of surprised because Mika to me is pretty like laid back and chill. So I was surprised to see her to see her popped up and like getting into it with him. And I feel like something had to have happened behind the scenes for her to feel as strongly as she does about him. But yeah, they're going back and forth. And he mentions the fact that she has two kids and she's a baby mama. And I'm like, out of line, sir. You're out of line. Out of line. He didn't talk about her kids, but just mentioning the fact that she's a single mom, that's none of your business, first off. None of your business. There are a lot of people on this show that are single moms and single dads. What does that have to do with anything? So Koshia comes in and says that, you know, Patrice saying that Will sleep on the floor did not impact the way she felt about him, which Patrice, you shouldn't have said that that man was sleeping on the floor. You shouldn't have said that because you don't even know that to be true. You just saying stuff, being dramatic. But she said that Alexis was the one that impacted the way she felt about Will. And why she say that? Because Alexis started getting piped up. She was on one. She's on something. She's definitely on something tonight because she was doing the absolute most. Her and Koshia going back and forth. And I'm like, Alexis, you didn't learn from the first time you and Koshia went back and forth. I don't think you want it with her. I really don't. And I don't think you want it with Mika either because you tried to pipe up on Mika too. I don't think you want it with either one of them because they look like they will wash you. With their hands behind their backs, actually. It's nothing. It's, it's really nothing. So I think you should sit all the way back. Zip your lips. And stop. Okay? But I made a note here in my on my iPad that Will is the type of guy that can't handle rejection. He's the type of guy that like will try to come up to you and hit on you. And if you're like, oh, I'm not interested. I got a man. He'll be like, oh, you ugly anyway. He's that type of guy. That's why he couldn't really handle the smoke that he got tonight. And it's very unattractive, not cute. And that's why you didn't make it to the end. So then we move on to Glenn, who was the guy that just didn't show up for any of the mixers. He just didn't show up at all. He was like, can't do it, won't do it, don't want to do it. And I'm just wondering, why is he here? Why? I don't get it. I really don't think that that was necessary to bring him on, especially because it doesn't seem like being on TV is anything that he's remotely interested in even though he signed up for the show it gives I feel like he has extreme social anxiety and when the cameras came out and the lights were on he was like this is not for me and that's okay I feel like that is completely and totally okay because being on TV is scary when you really sit back and think about the fact that everything that they record, everything that you do, they're going to be recording it. And they can edit it any type of way they want to. You got a job, you got a kid, family, watching all this. And it's very nerve-wracking. I do commend everybody that's on this show for being on the show because it is a scary thing. I'm not on no reality TV show. I'm just sitting behind my camera in my bedroom. Even doing this can be scary for some people. But it didn't seem like this was something that he wanted to do in the end. So him being on the reunion, I just didn't understand it. Because he even said that him being on that stage, he was feeling very anxious. But Tommy said that, you know, because you are here now and you didn't really get the chance to explore any connections on the show 
we're going to give you a chance to do some speed dating behind um, behind the scenes. And I was like, okay, I guess, I don't know, I guess, that's cool, whatever. But when asked about why he didn't show up, he said that he was taking his son to school and then he ended up getting into a wreck that same day. So he probably just wasn't really in a good headspace to begin with. And then like when you get into a wreck, you have like that moves up to the top of your list of priorities. There's a lot of money involved, insurance, all that type of stuff. He probably, this show probably wasn't important enough to him to want to be on. He had to take care of his car. He got to get his son to or from school and whatever else he has to do. So this show just wasn't really for him at this time. And I didn't know that Glenn is 42 years old. He looks amazing for 42. He looks great, but you know what? He's black. He's one of us. He's my brother. So of course he looks great. So we move on to Leilin who had to self eliminate because she had a lot going on with her family, stuff like that. We see her um, highlight reel basically of her time on the show. She was a breath of fresh air. Like all the guys really liked her and connected with her because she just seemed so genuine and sweet and she's beautiful. I really wish she would have been able to stay on the show and build a connection or two maybe. But she said that everything's going a lot better for her family, which is really, really great to hear. I'm so glad that, you know, this whatever she was going through didn't end in the worst case scenario. Chaz had the nerve to say that if Leilin were to stay on the show, he would have been chasing her and she would have been like his top connection. I can't wait till we get to Chaz's segment of the show because I'm going to tear you up. I can't wait. All the guys felt like if she was able to stay on the show, she would have been able to find a connection because like I said, she's a breath of fresh air. All the guys really liked her and really digged her personality. They meshed well with her, but she said that she's dating now. Awesome for her. And Tommy asked her if there were any guys on the show or on the stage that she would have liked to build a connection with or she could possibly want to build a connection with. She was kind of like, uh, mm, mm. she ain't really I don't remember her really giving an answer, but it was giving no. And I'm pretty sure that's because she watched the show in its entirety and was like, all these Negroes are fools. Fools. No. I don't see Leilin with any of those guys, to be honest, because, yeah, no. If I could see her with anyone, it would just be, it would be Dominique. That will probably be the only guy I would see her with. That's it. Because everyone else was giving clown mania. We get to the topic of choked or spanked. And... Ridiculous. Just ridiculous. The whole thing ridiculous. And the fact that Alonzo was trying to defend that him asking that question wasn't sexual in any way. If you're asking someone choked or spanked and it's not sexual, so you're going around choking and spanking people, that's a bit scary. That's a bit scary. Sounds like abuse. Sounds like you need to spend some time in a cell if you're just going around choking and spanking people. Sounds like you don't need to be around humanity if you're not doing that in a sexual way. It's giving weird. I really couldn't believe that he was trying to defend that he didn't mean that in a sexual way. He said that, you know, sometimes when you're kissing someone, you may like choke them a little bit. Is that not sexual? And I was watching, um, I watched a couple of clips. I need to watch the whole thing, but a little black book 91, he Kojo, he did a live with Alonzo and he doesn't know how to take accountability for anything. 
he's the type of guy that he always wants to be right even with it even when what he's saying makes no sense at all makes zero sense and him defending the fact that he said this to Koshia and that it wasn't sexual I'm just thinking like what's not connecting up here are you not mentally well like just admit that admit that what you said it was sexual because there were some women that were with it Koshia was not and I would have been with Koshia if he would have texted me that he probably wouldn't have ever heard from me again actually um you don't just come out the blue asking me stuff like that and I don't even know you like that we're not even on that level we're nowhere near it for you to ask me something like that and that's why I said again he's a sneaky link that's all he looks for that's all he wants so our last segment of this episode of the reunion involves the games that they played throughout the show I feel like they were just running out of stuff to talk about but if I'm not mistaken did Tommy say that this was gonna be a four-part reunion four-part reunion why why is this four parts Y'all could have actually taken this whole game segment out and added other segments in. We could have talked to William in this last segment because I would have loved to see more from him because he was he was there for for a good amount of time. I don't know why we didn't get to his segment this this episode, but the games. What's going on? Why? Why are we talking about games? on Ready to Love. But we see, you know, the montage of them playing games or whatever, mainly the Truth or Sexy game, and Tommy asks if anyone else has played Truth or Sexy, and of course Lamar's freaky self said that he has. It's like a um, an icebreaker when he meets women. He's a weirdo. Gross. Ugh. So they decide to play a game on the reunion. Who said this? That's what the game is called. Who said this? Why are we playing games on the reunion? Why? When have we ever played games on a reunion show? The reunion is to rehash any situation, drama, whatever that happened on the show. Why are we playing games and why are there confessionals? Has this show lost its way? And I'm a Ready to Love fan. I love Ready to Love. I really love this show. But I'm not understanding what's going on. So apparently April called William a mixture between Jeffrey the Giraffe from Toys R Us and Forrest Gump. I thought that was extremely rude. Extremely rude. April you might not want to talk about anyone's appearance and I'm gonna leave it at that so then the snake question comes up and this was the catalyst for Alexis to get into it with everybody a whole full-out brawl started she was getting into it with Mika she was getting into it with Laron. it was not cute not your finest moment and you haven't really had many fine moments on this show Alexis I don't know what your goal was signing up on this show and you know what I had faith in you when you first when I first saw you on the show I really had faith in you I actually liked you at first but the more those layers of the onion kept peeling off I saw you for who you really are you are fake you're not a girl's girl you're a lame. You're a dork. You sitting here calling Lorana a dork. No, you're the dork. You are. You look absolutely crazy on TV. You need to lay off the Hennessy. It's not working for you. You've had a little bit too much. Put the cup down and whatever else you're doing, allegedly. Put that down and stop. Act like a lady. You're acting like an animal tonight. A complete and total animal tonight. 
So the guys were trying to like calm her down. It just got to be so out of control. I didn't know what was going on. It was happening so fast that I was just like, what's happening here? What's going on? Alonzo came over. Justin came over trying to calm her down. Justin was like, look, I can close my mouth. Watch. <laughs> that was so... <laughs> so funny to me <laughs> I like Justin though he's funny that was hilarious to me but you know because Justin was there Mika was there too that's her man so she was standing behind she wasn't doing anything at first Alexis started getting real rah rah with Justin so Mika is like hold up you're not gonna talk to my man like that you're not gonna talk to me like that and don't touch me don't put your hands on me don't so she has to get escorted off the stage. She's lost it. Completely lost it. Will went to the back to check on her, see if she's okay. She's cursing, cursing everybody out. Security, production, cameraman, cussing them all out, giving them the middle finger. She's done over it. And I'm just like, she's got to be drunk. She's got to be drunk. What's going on? She was, she's been on 10 all night. All night. Have y'all noticed? Did y'all notice that? On 10, all night. She needs to just go home. And then she said she spent a rack to be on the reunion. A rack on what? Because that dress wasn't given. That hair, you could have done that at home. Just saying. I could have done that at home. All that that she was giving, I could have done that at home. The makeup, not given. The dress, not given. The hair, okay. But it looks like you did it yourself. So what did you spend a rack on, exactly? I'm waiting, because I want to know. What did you spend a rack on? <laughs> Completely and totally out of control. Put her in the van, take her home. We don't need to see any more of Alexis tonight or for the rest of the, re the reunion. We don't need to see any more of her. She's done. Absolutely done. She wasn't even there long enough for us to see any of her segment. We don't care. But I would love to know what y'all thought about part one of the reunion for Ready to Love. Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel. On the road to 1K, we are so close, y'all. I can feel it. I feel it right here. We're getting so close. But I hope y'all really enjoyed this video. And until next time, bye.